Hello and welcome to Space, here from the Centre for Astrobiology in Madrid. The scientists here spend their time looking for signs of life on other moons and planets in our solar system. And they do so by taking samples from the most extraordinary places. Welcome to Mars, also known as the Rio Tinto region of southern Spain. This is like Mars because the kind of minerals that you find here have been reported on Mars. I mean, uh, in, from the uh, geochemical and from the mineralogical point of view, this is Mars on Earth. Scientists have been coming to this Mars on Earth for 30 years to study the life forms here. water is very acidic, around pH 2.3, and the uh, oxygen content, as we go down, goes down too, because in the bottom of the sediments is completely anoxic. The big discovery of Rio Tinto is that the iron oxide and sulfuric acid in the water are actually produced by life forms deep underground, living in pores in the rock. And here they are, iron-eating, single-celled organisms. They're in complete darkness, and the life down there doesn't rely on light in any way. Moreover, we could describe it as an oligotrophic environment. That means there isn't much to eat for the microorganisms to survive. Nevertheless, when we started just a few years ago to look at the subsurface, we found there really is lots of life down there. The samples from the Rio Tinto are analysed here at the Centre for Astrobiology in Madrid. They use them as a reference point to study what life could be like on other planets and develop devices to detect it. We want to learn about the microbiology in the subsurface. We want to understand what microorganisms are there and what remains they have left behind. Above all, because we want to test the instrumentation that we have developed to look for life on Mars. If this instrument works in these conditions, where the concentration of life is very low, we think it can also work on the red planet. Mars isn't alone in attracting attention. This place, Jupiter's moon Europa, is another favorite for astrobiologists. A decade from now, Europa will be explored by ESA's JUICE spacecraft. It's a hotly anticipated mission here at the agency's astronomy base near Madrid. The general goal of JUICE is to do an exploration moon by moon of Jupiter, starting out with the outermost moon Callisto, then Ganymede, then Europa, the three moons that are largely made of ice and might have subsurface oceans. And the idea is just to understand those moons. There are intriguing hints about them, that they could be much more interesting places for life than ever, anyone ever imagined a few years ago. Even Saturn's moon Titan has become a target for astrobiologists ever since ESA's Huygens probe found liquid methane and ethane on its surface in 2005. Titan's atmosphere has huge amounts of methane. Where does that come from? And one of the crazier theories that's around is that there might be large amounts of bacteria down underneath the surface and they are producing the methane that fills the atmosphere of Titan. Most theories now imagine life existing within the dense, salty oceans beneath the crusts of these icy moons like Europa. And in this lab, the researchers try to recreate those conditions and then study the chemistry of those environments. 
What we do is we introduce a sample with the chemical that we want to study. We put it into this chamber and submit it to very high pressure, for example, up to 500 times Earth's atmosphere in this case, and up to 10,000 times our atmosphere here, which allows us to simulate the conditions in the oceans of Europa or Ganymede, for example. Nobody believes there's intelligent life elsewhere in our solar system. There are no little green beings, no insects or plants away from Earth. Instead, it would likely be similar to the microscopic organisms in the rock of Rio Tinto. It's not like the life that we grow in a laboratory, for example, where the microorganisms grow in a couple of hours. In the subsurface, we're talking about geological timescales for multiplication. It's a completely different type of life, but they are alive and they're doing well. The discoveries at Rio Tinto have boosted the field of astrobiology. Where only a decade ago speculation on life in our solar system was treated with scepticism, it's now no longer the case. Earth and Mars, they are twin uh, planets. They have the same origin, a little this different distance from the Sun, but the, geolo the geology is, is very similar. So if there is life on Earth, why shouldn't be life on Mars? Answers to that question could come very soon. In 2020, the joint ESA-Roscosmos ExoMars mission will head to Mars becoming the first ever mission to dig for signs of life below the surface. And now to the part of the show in which we take your questions about the universe and put them to the experts using the hashtag AskSpace. Now, I'm joined by a video link from Houston by astronaut Paolo Nespoli. Hi, Paolo. We've had a question from Michael Kinzer from the United States. He would like to know how astronauts are preparing to deal with long periods in weightlessness and with high radiation on journeys to places like Mars. Well, that's a good uh, question. All this problem, radiation, we could build a, sh a shield, we could build an electromagnetic shield, we could use water to shield. I mean, there are some proposals for something, some better, some less better. I think the important part is isolation and confinement. I mean, I, I was thinking, I was on station, and I was thinking, you know, I'm here. If there is a problem, I can jump on my Soyuz, my capsule attached here, and in four hours I will be on the ground. What about if I'm on Mars? What are you going to do? I mean, th and, 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 and this starts working in your brain even before you have a problem. So all of this, we need to understand all of this and prepare. And this is what we're doing on the space station. And, uh, and, and again, I'm pretty sure we will understand all of this and we will go to Mars. And I will sign up if I can. Please sign me up. <laughs> Well, thanks very much, Paolo. Well, you can send your questions about the universe using the Ask Space hashtag, and we'll try to answer them. And in the meantime, you can keep up to date with other news from the universe on Euronews.com.